So when you start doing these two-dimensional motion problems, one thing that's going to come up is being able to track the position and velocity of the object as it flies through the air for various reasons. How high will it go? How far will it go? That sort of thing. So if you have something that's flying through the air, I'll sort of draw a Cartesian coordinate system like this. You maybe get the object sort of flying through the air, something like this. At any given time through its flight, I'll even sort of go over here, like here's the, the ball or whatever sort of flying through the air. This point where it exists here is an xy point, because this is sort of a spatial domain right here. This is the x coordinate, that's the y coordinate. And if you wanted to plot a point somewhere for the position, it would be an xy point. So one thing about two-dimensional motion is understanding, well, where is it, x coordinate does it have, and what y coordinate does it have. Likewise, when it flies, at any given time, you might be interested in, well, how fast is it moving in the x coordinate? How fast is it moving along the y coordinate like that? Something like that. So you might also be interested in what vx and vy coordinates the object has as it flies. How is this handled? Well, as the object flies, as you saw in sort of a previous video, there, we just use the two equations that we know about physics, in particular, x is x0 plus v0x delta t. That's the x-coordinate. There's normally a one-half ax delta t squared term here, but there's no acceleration on the x-coordinate for this type of motion here. And vx is always going to be v naught x. So there's two things that are sort of particular about projectile motion. The first one is this one right here, in that vx here is always constant. vx is just a constant. And it's always, in fact, what constant isn't? Just the launch component. The launch component of velocity on the x-axis never changes. And again, the reason why the velocity doesn't change is because ax is equal to zero. There's no x acceleration, so the velocity on the x component or the x axis won't change. The other thing you notice over here, the second thing is that, as I just mentioned here, because ax is equal to zero, uh, there is no acceleration term in this. So you sort of have, in this nutshell right here, at any given time you're of interest, you have the x coordinate of the ball and its speed on the x axis. The same thing actually occurs for the y axis here y is equal to y naught plus v0 y delta t, but now you do have an acceleration term, so you will have a minus one half g delta t squared. You will have that in there, and you'll also have a vy term here. vy is equal to v0 minus g times delta t. So two things that you notice about this that are different than the x-axis right here is that in this one here, because a sub y is not equal to zero, you do have this acceleration term, so you do have the quadratic term in here. And also, if you look at this here, v sub y here is not constant. It is not a constant anymore because you have this acceleration term. This one did not have the acceleration term. It's going to be constant. This one does have the acceleration term, so it's not going to be constant. So you would expect then that as this projectile flies through the air here, at any given time, say during its flight, let's maybe draw some of the vectors on there. If it has this launch vector over here as it got launched, it will have a v sub x, which is this way here. You can say call it v sub x, and v sub x will never change. It will always sort of carry that green arrow pointing towards the right on it as it flies through. Now, v sub y will change. Like, for instance, over here, v sub y is very large, sort of just as it got launched. But as it sort of flies through the air, the v sub y gets smaller and smaller and smaller until at the very apex right here, you actually reach a point where v sub y is equal to zero. At the very top there of its motion, it doesn't have any y velocity anymore because it's about to start coming back down again. And as you sort of start to go back down the path here, v sub y will start growing again larger and larger and larger until when it gets down to the very bottom here, it had exactly the same v sub y that it had when it launched like that. And that is all contained in this equation right here. The v sub y get is large, gets small, goes to zero, and then it starts getting large in the opposite direction again, where the v sub x is just a constant as it goes all the way across. So you have some information about the velocities right there, the x and y velocities, and you have the information you need here about the x and y positions as it flies. So one last thing, and I just want to look here in particular about the positions here. You know that x equal to x naught plus v zero x delta t. And you know that y is equal to y naught plus v zero y delta t minus one half g delta t squared. So you have the equation that governs its motion here. Because the projectile start, it flies through the air, it always has an xy coordinate, which it currently exists at, and they're predicted by these two equations. So the equations actually are always working together as the projectile flies through the air. The sort of um, x is always concerned with the x coordinate, y is always concerned with the y coordinate. How are they linked? Well, in terms of asking how they link is, do the x and y actually talk to each other, or are they used to each other, or do they do anything to affect each other? The answer is no. The x and y coordinates are not linked at all. X is independent of Y. X does whatever it wants to do. Y does whatever it wants to do. 
And as we know, the y coordinate is affected by gravity, the x coordinate is not affected by gravity, and they're just completely independent equations and completely independent processes that go along as the projectile flies through the air. But I just wanted to point out that the one link, maybe we don't have to be so strong saying no, maybe we can say just a small yes in there, the linkage is through the delta t. That is what the equations do have in common because the delta t of the x right here, there, there, and there are the same delta t. In other words, as time goes on, as the projectile flies through the air, the delta t that the x experiences is the same as the delta t that the y experiences, and so on and so forth. So the delta t is something that would link these two motions together. And I'll just point out that depending on what problem you're working on here, as you try to link the delta t's here, sometimes that delta t will be the hang time, which we discussed in an earlier video. So, for instance, if you can sort of figure out what the hang time is, you can get all kinds of stuff from it, because that refers to how long it's in the air. For instance, if you put the hang time in here, the x would be the horizontal extent, the maximum motion or the distance that the projectile covered as it flew through the air. And, well, the hang time often comes from the delta y, so that would be the linkage between them in a case like that if you were concerned with some sort of problem that dealt with how long the object was in the air. So there you go.